Russia has made some pretty amazing pieces of technology. It's put men in space, created big ships, and although some of these things we might think about have been aimed more towards destruction, you have to admit that Russia has made it big nonetheless. And today, we look at probably one of the most forgotten pieces of technology that was extremely effective and had a rather interesting reputation. Today, we look at Russia's great MiG-21 fighter and learn some really cool facts about it. How's it going, everybody? What is going on? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name is Dave Wapple, and today, yeah, you see it in the title, in that little prologue there, we're talking about the MiG-21. Now, I'm pretty excited for this because, I mean, for me, when I used to look at, like, a fighter like this, I, you know, I'd look at the American fighters and I'd be like, that looks like a well-made fighter. I'd look at something like the MiG-21 and I'd say, well, this is probably going to fall out of the sky. It looks so kind of badly made. But, hey, here's the thing is looks can be so deceiving. And that's the one thing that I like about the MiG-21. It's still around today and it's used by many different militaries from around the world. It's been around for a long time. Now, before I get in the video, just a little self-promotion, but it's really for you guys. If you guys like military topics and you want more military content, check out our playlist throughout this video in the description box below or in the cards throughout the vid. Other than that, if you like this topic and you want more of it, be sure to hit that like button so I know to do more. So let's get started. The MiG-21 is one of the most produced aircrafts in the entire world. As a matter of fact, there have been at least 11,496 of these fighters made. And that is actually more than the entire Boeing 737 fleet or the F-16. It's insane. But however, it is an old fighter and in 2019 today, it's had a long and worthy life. As a matter of fact, it's classified as the second most produced jet aircraft in the entire world, but it also claims the title of the most produced supersonic aircraft to have ever been made. The first obviously being the famous MiG-15, but that fighter was classified as transonic, incapable of going supersonic speeds like the MiG-21. So the question remains, why is it so good that there are still countries that are using it today? Let's find out. The MiG-21 was introduced in 1959. This was known as the MiG-21F version. Immediately, it went right into service, being produced from that year of 1959 until 1985, having a production life of 26 years. The MiG-21 was a definite improvement off of the MiG-19. This particular craft changed its wing design from the MiG-19's swept wing to the triangular delta wings, which helped it greatly at high speeds. The thing, though, that you may be thinking is that the MiG-21 looks like a simple design. Well, that's because it was intended to be very simple. The reason? So they could actually make a lot of them. However, it wasn't just the design that led it to being a massively produced fighter. It was also the fact that the fighter was cheap to make. One major fact of its inexpensive cost was that the MiG-21 originally didn't have any real form of long-range radar, nor did it have a long-range guided missile ability, which was a trait that would change for future versions. That I'll get into. As a matter of fact, when we talk about cost, it was so cheap that, as a matter of fact, you could make several of these to one F-4 Phantom fighter. It was actually even cheaper than the land vehicle known as the BMP-1. To give you an idea of the cost, in 1965, an F-4 Phantom was approximately 2.4 million US dollars for its most upgraded version, and the MiG-21 was far cheaper than that. However, let's dive a little bit further into some of the production details. To dive further into some facts about its production, its original design phase for the MiG-21 began in 1954 by the Miyokin OKB, under the prototype name known as YE-1. As tests went by, it became the first successful fighter and bomber aircraft for the Soviet Union. Its maiden flight was on June 16, 1955, with it being revealed a year later in July of 1956 during Soviet Aviation Day in Moscow. Within Russia alone, the MiG-21 was produced frequently at three different factories. There was the AZ-30 factory in Moscow and the GAZ-21 factory in Gorky, 
and the TAZ-31 factory in Tbilisi. The Gorky factory actually also pushed out alone over 5,700 of these aircraft for Russia. Eventually, Czechoslovakia also had a license to make them, in which they produced 164 of these within the country. As well, India's Hindustan Aeronautics Limited Company built 657 under a license that was granted by Russia. This also made the MiG-21 the first supersonic fighter for the country of India. As well, for this video, I want to mention that I'm specifically focusing on the MiG-21 and not China's version of the aircraft known as the Chengdu-7, which interesting enough for Pakistan's JF-17, it was created under a program known as the Sabre 2 program, a program to upgrade the Chengdu-7 being called the Super 7 fighter. Eventually, the JF-17 evolved out of that, in which one could say that the JF-17 is a form of offspring of the MiG-21. Also, when it comes to design, one thing that you may not know is the nose cone on the front. It's actually adjustable in flight. It has three different positions. If fully retracted, it helps the aircraft in slower speeds of under Mach 1.5, where fully extended, it aids at speeds much higher than Mach 1.9. This was designed to help slow the amount of air going into the engine at certain speeds. And when it comes to air intake on the sides of the MiG-21, there's also little holes in which people call gills to allow more air to come into the plane for takeoff. Now, in regards to India and Pakistan, this fighter actually made a lot of noise between the India and Pakistan conflicts. Although it wasn't seen much in the 1965 war due to the fact that they were more on a defensive measure, pilots swore by this new aircraft. After that, India bought more of these. In total, they had approximately 1,200 MiG-21s. And in today's world, they still got them, having about 113 of them still in service. In terms of combat history, they were present during the 1971 war with Pakistan and the Bangladesh Liberation War. During the 1971 conflict, this was the first time the MiG-21 was in a supersonic conflict inside the Indian subcontinent, meaning that they actually went head-to-head -head against another supersonic fighter. And this fighter was the American-made, Pakistan-purchased and operated F-104 Starfighter. And although the India and Pakistan conflicts may be a very notable moment for the MiG-21's history, it was actually Vietnam where the MiG-21 got its most reputation. Shortly after the Americans confirmed their involvement in the War of Vietnam, the Soviet Union supplied the North Vietnamese with these fighters in 1966. Throughout the entire War of Vietnam, the MiG-21 was against a great adversary, and these were the American F-4 Phantoms. As a matter of fact, it's been reported that the North Vietnamese MiG-21s shot down 103 Phantoms, and the Phantoms managed to shoot down 54 MiG-21s, in which throughout the entire war, the North Vietnam had only lost 60 MiG-21s in total, at least confirmed on paper. And to dive further into MiG-21 lore, we cannot mention the Vietnam War and a MiG-21 without mentioning the best flying ace of the MiG-21, who was the North Vietnamese pilot known as Nguyen Van Suk, who downed nine aircraft in his MiG-21 using the R-3S Atoll missile every single time. For other conflicts, the MiG-21 has also been a part of the Egyptian-Israel conflicts that raged from the 1970s and onward. As well, the MiG-21 was present in the civil war in Syria and Iran and Iraq conflicts and other Middle Eastern conflicts as well, and a lot more. Throughout history, though, the MiG-21 has had three major generation upgrades. And within these three major generational upgrades, there's at least a dozen different versions. The most modern common upgrade of the MiG-21 is the MiG-21-93, which was the new standard from Russia, allowing the aircraft to have a longer range radar and beyond visual firing. For that version, it has a speed of Mach 1.05 at sea level, 
and 1.76 at higher altitudes at least, while having a loaded weight of 19,230 pounds. And as a matter of fact, some of you might be wondering what of its name. Some people have probably heard it being called the fish bed. Well, the reason for this is because that is the NATO designation for the aircraft. However, sometimes the Russians used to refer to it as the balalaika, being named after the famous Russian instrument. But overall, in today's world, it's being used by at least 19 different countries currently, and in history, it has been used by over 40 different countries and organizations from all around the world. And that is not including anything privately owned. As a matter of fact, the FAA confirms that there is currently 44 of these aircrafts privately owned in the United States alone. And because of all of this history, it is still operating today. It has seen more conflicts than any other fighter in human history. As well, it has been in service for over 60 years, making the MiG-21 a legendary fighter to be added to the book of man. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you really liked this video. My name is Dave Wapple, and before you guys get out of here, don't forget to check out our other cool playlists on cool military topics that I think you guys might enjoy. Other than that, for you new peeps, if you like this stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button, bell notification, so you can keep into tune in the stuff that I'm doing. And for my reoccurring peeps, yo, remember, leave a comment, a suggestion for a future FTD Facts video, because you know I love listening to you. But anyways, I'm Dave Wapple. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. So, okay, guys, here's those cool playlists that I was telling you about. All right, by the way, if I missed any really cool facts, feel free to educate others down there in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. You guys have yourself a fantastic day, and I'll see you later. Bye.